Do you have this big problem of finding a good tax and business consultant? With all the companies out there, it can be extremely hard to find a company that can actually do all the services they provide and meet the client's needs. Well, look no further. Here at MWG Financial Solutions and Tax Services, LLC, we specialize in tax preparation, business consulting, financial consulting, credit repair, and administrative services. Book your appointment today and consider your problem gone. Contact our office at 713-661-5555. Welcome back to the Session Talk Show. I'm your host, Atia Willis, and we have a special guest host today. So let me introduce our co-hostesses. We have... TikTok Mama. Yes. Yay. I'm Stacey V, y'all. And you know, I'm Rose. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get into it, okay? Right. So it's two, It's 2023. I'm still getting used to that. But there is a song that is the anthem of the year, okay? Y'all wanna hear this? Yeah. Okay, let me play this, okay? Yes. Of the year of, of our, the year? our no, no, no. lives. It, of our lives. Our lives. Okay. Now, why is this the anthem? That is the song that calls everyone to the dance floor. Yes. Everyone. Everyone to the dance floor, including Don Lemon, guys. Because yes. he forgot the countdown. <laughs> So uh, CNN was probably so confused, like, what is going on? Why is this man not counting down the new year? Don Lemon was in New Orleans and got caught up in Dude. that in that Creole vibe and all the bouncing and shaking and forgot about the ball dropping, baby. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you know, know all about that. Those beautiful women, though. <laughs> Dancing with all those beautiful women. And I was thinking, hmm. Listen, oh. it will hypnotize you down it that. Oh, yeah, it'll, it'll cause men to go straight because when you're in New Orleans. <laughs> Not saying, but hey, you know, we're both from Louisiana, yeah. and I know you know how Louisiana women get, yeah. okay? Because they don't care that it was CNN. They were backing it up, okay? Don, you can come back anytime, honey. <laughs> <laughs> so what else What else did you guys see for 2023? I mean, I was home watching everything. I was just flipping through the channels, trying to see everything. Dolly. Oh, Dolly yeah. and Miley, did you see their little yeah. concert? Yes, I watched Dolly. Uh Shout out to uh, Paris Hilton for coming out. That was crazy. Yeah. You know, like I haven't seen her perform that song in years. But my favorite part was Dolly and Miley Cyrus duo. That yeah. was a duet yeah. I didn't know I needed to hear. Yeah. Like, did y'all hear it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not big on country okay. music, but that, I'm big on country music. Okay. Well, you already know how special that was. Yeah. And, and you know, Miley looks just so sexy in that. Little great. black dress, oh, like like a lady, like because you know, darling, I'm old fashioned. Okay, you know, you're like you're, you're on the conservative side. I'm, I'm on the conservative side. Yeah, okay. but then she looks really so good, and they were just like salt and pepper. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it was. It was. You no, know, now when I'm in my seventies, I want to look like that. What about you? Oh yes, yes, <laughs> honey, she looks so good all the time. Like she stays put she together. Stays. She's mm-hmm. well put together. Oh, oh my God! God. You know, she's, she's, she's like the old school. Remember the ladies? Okay. Yes. We will not go out with everything matching. But I make up a purse matches our shoes. Yeah, I love it. That she's is a her classy lady. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I watched an interview. Um, I don't know if y'all remember this movie. Of course, y'all do. Still Magnolias. The yeah. yeah. So whenever they were in being interviewed, Julia Roberts was choked up when she was talking about Dolly. Julia Roberts said she was on set. It was hot because, you know, they were filming outside of the country. She was telling the director, she was like, I'm hot, we need water. And then she turned to Dolly and Dolly just sitting there. And she said, Dolly, I mean, say something. Tell him you're hot, you're miserable. And Dolly told her, you know what, honey? You know, she had the accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she said, when I was a little girl, all I wanted to be was rich and famous one day. And heck, I'm rich and famous. I have nothing to complain about. Oh, right. And Julia oh. Roberts said that taught her a lesson that moment to just be peace and at ease and appreciate your moment. And she learned a lot because at that time, Julia Roberts, I was she's new to the industry. And here she is being a diva. And the diva herself is saying, honey, calm down. Love it. But You're at the like, level. That's the epitome of Dolly. Like she does like a lot of humanitarian things. Yes. She's very, very big, financially supportive in you know, the COVID um, um, vaccine research and all of that. Like, you gotta love Dolly. I love Dolly. Yeah, I remember from nine to five, but then again, 
Let's talk about rest in peace. Papa oh, Walker Walsh. Oh my goodness. I, I remember her when I was a little girl. I was thinking the lady got balls. She was asking all those tough <laughs> questions and making these rich people, rich, rich, yes. rich people. What's about a curse? Rich people cry. Yeah, yeah. she is. She's cutthroat. Every, every spokesperson, journalist, TV show host in the industry, no matter what level you are, d that Barbara is going to be their icon. That's who they look up to. It, it, what, what journalism back then was about integrity, mm. about getting the facts right, and you weren't going to say something until the facts is right. Yeah. And then, but Baba Walters, the lady, I, I respected her. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I missed her on TV. Yeah. With the view when she, when she left. What was y'all's favorite interview she's done? Mine was Whitney, honey. She called Whitney Houston out. Yeah. She said, Whitney, look at, look at your, look at your ribs, look at your bones. And Whitney's like, huh? What? You know, it you was know, <laughs> mine was Mariah Carey. You know, mm -hmm. y'all know how much I love Mariah Carey. Yeah, yes. every time I get a pick of you. <laughs> and so and so she had asked Mariah Carey if a certain uh Nikki lyrics were did she think they were about her? And so that was like a really good moment because it was yeah. on the American Idol time. Yes. And it was tension. So I thought that was fantastic. And Mariah was like, I don't know, don't care. Like, <laughs> I next didn't know question. She was a singer. Is she doing that now? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And speaking of Mariah, every time you bring up Mariah, you just got to bring up that diva. I love Mariah Carey's diva personality. My favorite diva moment with Mariah Carey is whenever um, an interviewer asked her, if she would ever do a song with Jennifer Lopez. And she said, I don't know. And she said, well, I don't know how that would sound. And it was <laughs> such a, like, Sorry. you know, like a respectful dig. Like, I mean, how would yeah. that sound? Like, basically, she ain't no singer. But, but the lady could, could just do those high notes and sound like a bird. Yeah. That's that's totally amazing. It's just like, I respect her talent. Yeah. If you have talent, you gotta have that confidence and that swagger. Yeah. yeah. You she know, right? Yeah. She's still everything. So, she is this so, Christmas though. I'm not sure if you guys have heard, but <laughs> we do want to send our prayers out to NFL, NFL player Demar Hamlin, oh. who suffered cardiac arrest on the field the other night. Yeah. Um, it was just, I saw the game. It was crazy. Um, it's one of those freak things where it has to be the right time, the right angle, the right everything to. You know, it was the perfect storm. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, actually, we though, were talking about that, and I just, I mean, what, did you watch the game, or mm -hmm. you just heard about I didn't. it? I I just heard about it. I watched the ESPN part of it, yeah. and I was just like, I was amazed how the anchor just stopped and prayed mm -hmm. for him. I mean, he stopped everything and just prayed, and everybody was just praying. I was just so moved. Yeah. By that, yeah. We still have what was, here. What yes. was remarkable yes. about that moment was, despite the time it took for the NFL to cancel the game, despite everything, it seemed like all the players, the anchors, mm -hmm. everyone was on the same page where, okay, yeah. stop. Our focus is on this young man who's only 24, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so I really, admire that about you know our our anchors and you know the bills players um even more so now because like it was a moment of humanity and sometimes in the midst of these when we're seeing like these superheroes you know we see them as superheroes yes that we are. have a moment where we can reflect on these are these are men yeah and once that's the first time in history that a game was yeah was I was say, yes. that's never happened right yeah and that that shows that shows his fans, his family, and him that he was honored. And you know, the NFL has a lot of controversy for being known for not caring for their players with the whole concussion. I mean, we had to have a whole movie. And when Will Smith does a movie on you, that means you got to change, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, so kudos to the NFL for stopping that game and giving him that respect and that time. Um, our prayers goes out to him, and I guess we'll just follow up with you guys and and keep you up on notice what's going on. Yeah. yeah. So okay. The yeah. nation prayed and we came together. And yeah. as a strong nation, we came together and prayed. And that we were courageous to pray. And that we came together. And it wasn't about a cancel culture. It was about coming together to pray for a man that uh, I'm praying that he'll make it. Yeah, me too.
Speaking of prayers, we know some families go through their stuff mm -hmm. and they need some thoughts and prayers. What are you talking about? Oh my gosh. So did you see that um, Romeo and Master P squashed their family beef? Thank goodness. I right? mean, how, there was how do a lot of family How do y'all feel about drama. that? But how do y'all feel about that? Because like, I feel yeah. a, a way about airing family yeah, business. Yeah, I don't like, like that. Yeah. I don't like Me that. Me neither. How long was it going on, the beef? Do y'all know? No, I did. It was a few I've weeks. seen the memes of Romeo being um, ghost from the power of sun in real life. <laughs> and I was like, oh, is it that bad? Because, <laughs> I mean, didn't he kill his dad in the series? Spoiler alert. I don't know. It's, it's been <laughs> over already. We okay, we've seen the series. <laughs> it ain't spoiled well, anymore. <laughs> Well, then I don't feel bad for telling him. But yeah, when I see the meme, I said, this must be really bad. But I'm glad they squashed it. I'm yeah, glad that they yeah. were able to reconcile and talk. I know that being in a family business together, especially that business, the music industry, that's hard. And Romeo probably has a lot of wounds that we don't even know about that he needed to deal with and confront with his dad. So um, I like to stay out of family's business, but I will say this. I'm glad that they actually had that over. conversation. Yeah, but yeah, there was some sweet one woman, though, that, that they, uh, the, the daughter, she, she had, she OD'd on fentanyl at age 29, and she was suffering that for 10 years. So basically, when Twitch committed suicide, he basically said, allegedly, you know, if I remembered it right, was is that, uh, what well, you don't seem to care about your kids and their depression and stuff like that. You don't take care of what I take care of the house in your own house. And then I was doing just a little bit of research on it, which is that they had a hard talk, and and whatever ever ever happened. You have to have a hard talk with each other in order to heal yeah. and where you're coming from. And I hope that they really do heal because yeah. uh, being father and son, we all need their love. Yeah, right. we do. I mean, Master P is a genius. Oh, Romeo I love Master is P. amazing. He's a genius. Like, we want to yeah. see some more snazzy things coming yes. from the family. Like, mm -hmm. when they work together, they produce great things. So I'm excited for them in their healing journey. Yeah, agreed. Life is just too short. Like men knows those yeah. problems. Yeah. yeah, you do. And um, well, he, Master P is like he, well his name is, he is a master because he is one of the first artists to actually start a label company mm -hmm. and represent himself and represent other artists and teach them about business and owning their own royalty. So I have a lot of respect for Master yeah. P, but I know a man um, of that level in who have started a business like that. He's an icon to a lot of um, rappers who have gone beyond rap, mm -hmm. like Jay-Z and Kanye West, mm -hmm. where it, they now are business moguls. Mm -hmm. And it all started with Master P. So right. I hope that they're able to fix that. I know they will. Um, Romeo is, I mean, I knew him when I was younger because yeah. he, he Lil was, Romeo. Lil Romeo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he was big on AAU and my dad and my brother was big on AAU. So he used to be in a lot of AAU tournaments and I, uh, he and his dad was, close from what I've seen so so yeah my hopes hopes for them speaking of close daddies <laughs> what daddy? to talk about you, the daddy who Nick Did Cannon it? oh my gosh of course <laughs> Nick Cannon please the tell me he does not have another baby on the way not well, that we know well, about well, okay, well, what's going on well he just recently had his 12th child congratulations Congrats. to Nick I know while we were discussing New Year's, mm -hmm. um, the events on New Year's, mm -hmm. Andy Cohen, he was doing an interview with Anderson Cooper mm -hmm. and Nick was on there and he asked him about a vasectomy. What did he and say? And Nick what? said, my body, my choice. Oh no, <laughs> wait a minute. I'm thinking that he is actually going to get a vasectomy. I, it's, my body, my choice. It's not their business to, it's not for them to tell him what he needs to do. I guess it's not but, his body. I mean, we live in a world where there's too many fatherless children. And I understand, like he said on Christmas that he played Santa Claus because he went all over to make sure he was with all his children. And I just think whatever happened to having a household where the father is in the home with the children in society right now, there's so many men that are okay 
with having multiple houses and multiple children. It's, it's like a hard one. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say it that way. He has how many kids? Is how many yeah. baby mothers? Like, I, let's stop I, this trend. I think that's not fair because at least he's present in all his children's lives. There's so many kids that don't even know who their dad is. Yeah, but that's because there's is, money. But he has other kids looking up to him. That's just what happens whenever you are a public figure. There are going to be Look. young men who say, he did it, why can't I? And they are not smart enough to know, you don't have that money. Well, then there wasn't nobody hating on the Brady Bunch. <laughs> they were a blended family and the father was in the home with yeah. all the children. But Brady Bunch, <laughs> I'm thinking you're at least gonna say so. The Parker family, which one? Oh, they gosh. got them kids, they got them kids. They do believe in the house. Donald Trump. Don't talk about Donald Trump. <laughs> 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 all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know what? When we get into our little hot topics, we can do this all day, okay? Uh, so I'm here with my sisters. We got a little more to talk about, but thank you for tuning in to the Session Talk Show. Uh -huh.